Hi again, this is Elena from Service Monster. Now let's review how to create a drip campaign. Drip campaigns are one of the awesome marketing features available to our Premier and Pro customers. But first, what is a drip campaign? A drip campaign is an automated marketing campaign. Whereas our regular campaigns are a manual process, drip campaigns run by themselves based on the schedule and conditions you set up for them. Drip campaigns can be created for email, call lists, mailing lists, and export lists. All the lists. Essentially, drip campaigns are an amazing tool to enhance your marketing and save you time. All right, let's hop on in and take a look. All right, from the home screen, click on marketing in the main menu, then click on drip campaigns. Here you can create, edit, view, and run your drip campaigns. These run automatically once set up and can also contain multiple campaigns and campaign types within them. So to create a new drip campaign, click on the blue plus drip campaign button at the top. Then rename your campaign in the text box at the top of the campaign builder. So the first main step we need to complete is setting up the audience. Creating the right audience for the campaign is an important step. This is where you can filter out any clients you do not want to include in the campaign. When you start to set up a drip campaign, your audience is this dark blue box that is already on the screen. So to edit your audience, click on the dark blue all active button, then click on the gear icon. Here you can view the filters being applied on the left and a preview of the audience included on the right. Campaigns automatically include the filter account active set as true, which means we are just including active accounts. You can add in more filters by clicking on the or or the uh, and button. Please check our help site to learn more about filters, how they work, and a full list of all marketing filters and what they mean. Because you only start with a filter for active accounts, you will want to make sure to filter out anyone you don't want to be included. So some important filters may include account do not contact. Some of your accounts may have their phone, email, or mail address marked as do not contact. We want to make sure we are being respectful of any clients who do not want to receive marketing materials. Depending on the type of campaign you are running, you will want to include the do not contact filter for email, phone, or mail. This filter will be set as false because we do not want to include accounts that are marked as do not contact. So another example would be account phone slash email is not blank. So if you're sending out an email or doing a phone call, you will want to make sure the accounts you are contacting have an email address or a phone number. For email, you can use account email set as not blank. For phone, you will want to use account phone one set as not blank and use the or button to add in filters for phone two or phone three, if there are any. Another example would be account commercial. You can choose to only contact commercial or residential accounts using the account commercial filter. If you want to reach commercial accounts, set this filter as true. If you want to reach residential accounts, set this filter as false. And for profile filters, those are filters created using custom fields. If we wanted filters for an email client retention campaign for residential accounts, we would select account active as true account do not contact email as false, account commercial as false, and account email as not blank. 
So these filters are set up to include only active residential accounts that have an email address and are not marked as do not contact. Click OK when you are finished. The second main step we will complete is setting up the campaign. Click and drag a green campaign box onto the area around your audience. The two will automatically connect and a window will open to start setting up the conditions for the campaign. Give the campaign a name at the top, then in the conditions tab, begin adding filters by clicking on the and button. For example, Order next job slash job reminder date. This looks at when the next appointment is scheduled for this client. You can also set this to blank if you want to only reach out to clients who don't have an appointment scheduled or set it to equal to and pick a specific amount of days, days, months, or years this should send before their next appointment. Order last invoice date. This filter looks at when the last invoice on the account was finished. You can set it to equal to and pick a specific number of days, months, or years since their last invoice was finished, or set it to blank if you want to reach out to accounts that have never had an invoice. Contact by this campaign. This filter is very important. This filter prevents this campaign from reaching out to the same clients multiple times. We typically recommend setting it as not within 30 days, which means no one will receive the same marketing more than once a month. After setting up any conditions, click on the recurrence tab to view the recurrence settings. Here you can set how often this campaign will run, when it will start, and when it will end. For the start, select the day this campaign will start on and the time it will run at. This is the time the email will send, the call activity will be created, or the letter will be generated. For the end, this is automatically set to run forever, but you can pick a specific end day and time the campaign will end on if you want. Then select how often the campaign will run. You can choose from daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. Next, in the Results tab, you can see all the accounts that will be included the next time this campaign runs. In the Transactions tab, you can view information about previous times this campaign has run, including who was included. Click OK when you are finished. Now the third main step we will complete is choosing the campaign type. So you need to choose from either Call mail, email, or export over here on the right. Then you're going to drag and drop in the light blue box for the type of campaign you want under the green box and they will automatically connect. Depending on the type of campaign you want, you will have different options to edit. Click on the campaign and then the gear icon to edit the details. For email campaigns, you can edit the following details. Reply to. This is the email address. It will look like the emails are being sent from and the email that clients can reply to. Subject, the subject line for the email. Document, the marketing template that will be sent out. Case, the case style for the email, either as is, uppercase, or mixed case. Send test to. Here you can add in an email address the test email will be sent to. Target count. The number of clients who are being sent this email. Cost. This is an optional box where you can enter in your cost information about a campaign. This is helpful for if you are running campaigns outside of Service Monster that have an associated cost. For call campaigns, you can edit the following details. 
delete pending marketing calls. This will help to clear out your activities and remove past marketing calls that have not been completed. Send call to. You can either select all users or specify specific users in Service Monster who should be handling the calls. For letter campaigns, you can edit the following details. Under print letters, we have document. If you want to print letters, you will need to choose the marketing template it will use here. Case style. Under print labels, label types. What type of labels you are printing? Start at. Which label it will start printing at in case you are using a previously used label sheet? Case, addressee. Choose how the letter will address the recipient. Please click save when you are finished. The final main step we will complete is activating the campaign. When you have at least one dark blue, light blue, and green box ready, you can save the campaign and start running it. Go ahead and save the campaign by clicking on the green save button. Then click on the disabled button and it will change to enabled and will turn green. Click on save one more time to save this change and your campaign is ready to run. In the green box you can now see the date and time of the next campaign run. To turn the campaign off again, simply click on the Enabled button so it says Disabled and click Save to turn the Drip campaign off. If you return to the Drip campaign page, you can see your new Drip campaign is now added to the list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Please remember to visit our help site for more information or contact our friendly support team if you have any further questions. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!